I think we will win again, but we're not complacent. Nick Clegg predicts his party can hold easily at the next general election. <laughs> Stopping cruelty in slaughterhouses, a local MP wants CCTV made compulsory. Southampton technology may help in the battle against Ebola. A professor at Southampton University has created a mobile map which uses data gathered from these to help tackle Ebola. Frustration for Basingstoke Town in the FA Cup. The news at five. Tate Slyfield. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. With the general election just six months away, two senior politicians have been visiting the marginal seat of Eastleigh. In a moment, we will be reporting on the visit yesterday of Conservative Minister Sajid Javid. But first, the Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg was in Eastleigh this morning. And as Alex Delaney reports, he is confident that the Lib Dems can hold on. The Deputy Prime Minister was in Eastleigh looking to win over votes this morning. Nick Clegg is hoping the Lib Dems will get credit for a strong economy and that it might boost his party's chances in the election. But in Eastleigh, immigration, not money, was a pivotal issue leading to the emergence of UKIP as a real threat. What has UKIP done? All they've done is gone around and pretend that somehow every problem in Eastleigh can be solved by blaming it on foreigners. People know that's not the case. We won this by-election despite all the predictions to the country and I think we will win again, but we're not complacent. News this morning was that Britain's strained relationship with the EU has reached a new low, but does this signal an imminent breakup? The reform, yes. But the big difference between myself and Nigel Farage and David Cameron is I don't believe exit is the answer. Threatening to quit and putting four million jobs at risk I think is deeply irresponsible and it's not something I would advocate. The Deputy Prime Minister was here to honour the factory's centenary, but while the future of Prismium looks certain, the future of the Lib Dems may not be. Alex Delaney, Winchester News Online, Eastleigh. Sajid Javid paid a surprise visit to the students of Barton Peveril College in Eastleigh, some of whom would be thinking of voting in May. And the Tories know that they need every vote to challenge the Lib Dems and UKIP. To do this, they must address immigration. The most important issue is, is to, first of all, see it as an important issue, and we do, unlike some other parties, but also to realise that the only way that we're eventually going to deal with excessive immigration is to have full control of our borders and that's why the Prime Minister has made absolutely clear that in any renegotiation with the European Union that will be at the heart of the negotiations. The candidate hoping to see a boost from high profile visits like these is Mims Davis. I'm certainly working very hard on the doorsteps meeting people and, and making sure that they feel that they're to look to us for, for 2015 is the, the right thing to be doing. We know this isn't going to be the only senior Tory candidate to come to Eastleigh before May and they will all be trying to hit the high notes. Zina Alabadi, Winchester News Online, Eastleigh. Animal rights group Animal Aid is campaigning for all slaughterhouses to be fitted with CCTV cameras to help prevent animal cruelty. Their efforts to raise the issue in Parliament have won the backing of local MP Mike Thornton. We should warn you that the following report from Hattie Waldron contains graphic images from the start. Punching and kicking, brutal insensitivity, an incompetence so bad it leaves animals in agony. These are some of the scenes which has led local MP Mike Thornton to argue in favour of having cameras put into slaughterhouses. I met Thornton in London and asked him his views on the case. I think it's so important that we make sure that animals, if they're going to be slaughtered, are slaughtered in the most humane conditions possible. If you have a camera there, then you can make sure that all of them work to the same standards as the very best slaughterhouses do. Kate Fowler, head of charity Animal Aid, told Winner about people's reaction to their footage inside slaughterhouses. Well, I hope they'd be shocked and disgusted and angry. Um, they should be. I mean, everybody that's seen our footage, um, I was speaking at a conference yesterday to slaughtermen, and uh, they were disgusted by it. So I think there's not a personal nurse that wouldn't be horrified by what we found. The fight for compulsory cameras has been argued for a number of years but support has been increasing recently from MPs all over the country. Hattie Waldron, Winchester News Online. 
a Christian pressure group called Because Children Matter leafleted the centre of Winchester this week, complaining about the university's support for a leading gay academic. The campaigners say the university, which is the publisher of Winchester News Online, should sack Professor Eric Anderson over remarks he made during a talk at Oxford University three years ago entitled, Why Gay Sex is Better Than Straight Sex. In a statement, university bosses said the comments were not appropriate and that the professor had been reprimanded. But the university added that it will not tolerate any targeting of its staff on the grounds of their sexual orientation, a claim which the group denies. A professor at Southampton University has developed some groundbreaking software to help contain the outbreak of Ebola. Isaac Edwards has this report. Ebola a deadly virus spreading across the globe. With over 5,000 fatalities and an estimated 20,000 cases by December, health experts predict a potential global epidemic. However, in Southampton this week, a new initiative has emerged that could help contain the disease using the most everyday, handheld technology. Mobile phones like this one are used every day for calls, texts, social media, and now to help fight Ebola. A professor at Southampton University has created a mobile map which uses data gathered from these to help tackle Ebola. For a range of applications including infectious disease outbreaks. So if we know where people are, where they're moving to, potentially we know uh, where the disease is spreading, uh, the risks of it spreading to new locations and how many people are in an affected area to, for delivering healthcare, to, for delivering drugs, to li delivering vaccines. Uh, it's not a magic bullet, it's not a magic yeah. potion that's going to uh, solve, uh, stop a spread of Ebola or another infectious disease just like that. Um, mm. It's going to be one of many useful data sets that, that can yeah. help support uh, the response to, a, to an infectious disease outbreak. The phone map could record the use of over 7 billion phones worldwide, 15 billion calls made each day, and 50 billion texts. This information can be traced to location, with the maps pinpointing the most populated areas, which in turn could pinpoint the most infected areas in the case of an outbreak. Isaac Edwards, Winchester News Online, Southampton. There are fears that fly tipping may rise after Hampshire County Council has decided to increase DIY waste removal prices. Nadija Parker has this. Hampshire homeowners will now be charged to remove their DIY waste after a decision made by Councillor Sean Woodward to save the council £1.5 million. So the only change that a householder would see is having to pay on the rare occasion that they have things like sheets of asbestos and bricks and blocks and rubble. And the reason for that is that it costs the county council a million pound to get rid of it. And we don't think that council taxpayers should have to subsidise the small minority of people that bring in that sort of DIY waste. Some believe that due to these recent changes, fly tipping will increase down country lanes. I personally really hate seeing dump stuff in the countryside. It's dangerous for animals, but it's better to prevent it in the first place. And I think that, can't, that brings us back to the charges. They're just maybe a bit short-sighted. I don't think it's going to save money in the long run. Nadija Parker, Winchester News Online. Rats are on the rise again in Winchester as many have been seen living around the train station. Toby Cruz has more. The rats in Winchester are becoming an increasingly common sight. Local man Raymond Marsh believes residents could be at risk. In a long life I've been used to rats and what to do about them. And uh, I've never seen so many rats since wartime in bombed out buildings. Uh, never seen anything like it. And they weren't afraid of humans, which is unusual. In the daylight as well, which is unusual. Uh, they, only, they would only scurry back when I banged my feet. In a statement from Network Rail, when all were told that after multiple complaints about the rodents, they have since hired a pest control company to deal with them. It is unknown how long it will take to eradicate the infestation, and with the population growing, we could see rats for some time. Toby Cruz, Winchester News Online, Winchester. 
Hampshire Fire and Rescue Chiefs are making the biggest cuts in the service's history. £16 million is being slashed from Hampshire's budget over the next four years, with job cuts being almost certain. Members of the service are discussing other options to cut costs in the bid to reduce effects to the front line. North Walls Police Station is closing despite no date being set for the move. Some officers will work from Winnell Fire Station, but the main relocation is still to be confirmed. All staff at the Winchester train station will be moving with no jobs lost. The Met Office has issued more severe weather warnings across Hampshire this week. Forecasts claim that this could be a wetter and windier winter than normal, creating fears of more flooding. Now over to Mark Betts with the latest on sports. After making it through to the FA Cup first round, Basingstoke were looking to progress to the second round for the first time in almost a decade. They faced AFC Telford, who have won two of their last eight games in all competitions. Expectations were high and Roderick Cannon was at the wet Soccer AM Stadium to see how it unfolded. Basingstoke were looking to bounce back from their defeat to Chelmsford with FA Cup success. But it was Telford who took the lead in the 18th minute and Rod McDonald's free kick found its way into the net. Celebrations from Telford but questions were asked of the Basingstoke wall. Basingstoke responded well and looked to draw themselves level before the break. Sean McCauley found himself unmarked in the box but his effort went over. The Dragons made it 1-1 shortly after half-time, as Chris Flood nodded in his 10th goal of the season to give the ascendancy to Jason Bristow's men. As the conditions worsened, chances started to flow. Sean Clancy fired over for the visitors, while Tom Bird flashed a dangerous ball across the six-yard box. In stoppage time, Louis Soares had the chance to send the Conference South leaders into the second round, but his powerful effort went wide. I thought we were the better side. I think uh, in really difficult conditions, we, we play some really good football. Um, we knew what they were about. They were very direct. They put balls in the box at every opportunity. We knew that was going to happen. Um, we dealt with it very well. And, you know, with another day, we could have had three or four goals, balls rolling across the, the six yard box. Um, but really pleased with the players today. I thought they, they, they worked really hard and adapted to the conditions a lot better than we have done in recent weeks and unfortunately not to go through. Eastleigh have made club history by qualifying for the second round following a 2-1 defeat of Lincoln City. They will face either Dagenham and Redbridge or Southport, whilst Basingstoke Town face a trip to League One leaders Bristol City. New Winchester City manager Paul Masters has had a mixed start to life as the Citizens boss. Ross Perkins sat down with him to find out what lies ahead for the season. Paul Masters has been in charge of Winchester City for just under a month. In that time, he has continued to steady the ship, with the club still harbouring hopes of promotion from the Wessex Premier Division. I sat down with Paul to ask him how he's found things at the Denplan City ground. How's it like for you to be sitting here as Winchester City manager? Obviously, um, I'm happy when the opportunity comes to uh, manage the club. It's a big club um, with big expectations, so yeah, I was really happy to take the job. Uh, the club is going strong at the moment top half of the table, how well can they do this season? I, I, for me it's an important time of the year, I've stressed that to the players, I think this time of year games will come thick and fast, the pitches aren't the best, with it, you know, and, and so it's important that we put a run together and I think if you put a run together this time of year and if you're in the mix at the end of the season then see where it takes you. So what is the goal for the club this season? The, the goal is to win the next football match um, and carry on winning the next football match and see where it takes us. You know, we've got a decent squad and we hope to be in the mix at the end of the season. That's all from Sports This Week. Back to the studio. Thanks, Mark. Locals joined together for Remembrance Day celebrations across Hampshire at the weekend. Veterans up and down the country took part in parades and two-minute silences to commemorate those who lost their lives in battle. Megan Fisher reports. Eastly armed forces and veterans came out in record numbers for Remembrance Day. Local servicemen laid wreaths in the town to mark the anniversary. Let us not forget that they gave their lives so we could live our lives in peace and freedom. Remembrance Day 2014 also marks a hundred years since the start of World War I. Megan Fisher, Winchester News Online. And over to the Features team to find out what they've been up to this week. In honour of November, our Features Chief, Beth Tremling, takes on a quest to find Winchester's best tash. 
Hi, my name is Tom Taylor and I'm taking part in November this month. I'm going for the Hannah Bar Star Mustache. Our reviews expert, Ryan McAndrew, got involved in a showcase put on by Performing Arts Winchester. And Ask Ellie is back. This week, how to contour. Lizzie is going to be showing you three different ways to contour. For all this and more, head to winnell.co.uk forward slash features and look out for the launch of our brand new feature site, W2, coming soon. That's all from us for this week, but for more award-winning news, sports and features, head to winnell.co.uk. Goodbye.